Android is a very powerful and popular operating system, but there are a few things about it which make it unique. My name is Nick Butcher, and I'd like to share with you today some of my favorite features of Android and how they make it super interesting. Now, my absolute favorite feature of Android is its openness. When I say open, you might think of something like this, uh, which is Andy Rubin, the godfather of Android, in fact, sharing his definition of open about how you can get access to the source code and build the operating system yourself. This is pretty cool, in my opinion, but it's not what I want to talk about today. What I mean by open is actually the opportunity it gives you, as people making applications, to make more interesting experiences. It's the openness to share data between applications, to create experiences which work together to be bigger than the sum of their parts, or what I like to think of as building task-based flows. Here's what I mean by that. Often, when you want to achieve something, you might have to use multiple different apps or different tools to do so. If those apps don't work together, then you're forced to work around this by doing things like taking screenshots or saving something to the clipboard, hitting home, going into a new application, pasting that in, and then hitting home, going to the third application, and going through the task. When really, as a user, what you want is to just move through these applications to achieve your goal. And this is what Android lets you do. Here's a simple example where I'm browsing a web page. I see some interesting text that I want to share onwards. So I just select it, hit share, and then post it through my app of choice. This is pretty trivial, but you can see how the apps organize themselves around the task I was trying to achieve, rather than me having to hit home and think of the app first and then go and force wrap the task around it. Here's a slightly more involved example where I'm browsing Twitter for some inspiration to a design problem I'm facing. I click on a link, which opens in a native application showing me an interesting image. I can share this image onto a drawing app, where I can mark it up, annotate it, scribble some notes, and then share it onward into my email application, where I can then send that on to a colleague. So notice that at no point did I ever have to copy anything, or hit home, or save anything. The apps themselves organized themselves around the task I was trying to achieve, letting me seamlessly flow through it. And these are the kind of open experiences which Android lets you build. Now, thinking about the openness, there's really kind of two aspects to it. There's the applications themselves, which can be open to working together. And there are open features of the operating system, which let your apps plug into. Now, for open apps, it's quite tempting sometimes to think of an app as a silo of information or functionality. But really, on Android, an application is actually more of a collection of individual functions. Now, you can wire up these components to build a cohesive application experience. But more interestingly is that the boundary to your application is kind of porous. You can call out to other applications, or have them call into you, or have the OS call into you at different points, allowing you to build this richer kind of experience. Let's take a look at what these components are that you can use to build your application. There are really four major types, screens, logic, data, and events. Or to use the correct developer terms, Activities, services, content providers, and broadcast receivers. Let's take a look at what each of these does. Now, a screen in your app is pretty obvious. It's something that you show to the user. But what's interesting is that you can expose parts of your app screens within your app to other applications, or invoke screens from other applications to be part of the flow within your app. This lets you actually kind of outsource work to other applications. Here's an example from my um, expenses application. It lets me take a photo of a receipt to track an expense. Now, the expenses app doesn't want to have to build a camera application itself. It just invokes a screen from another application, letting it outsource that task. So my other camera application takes a photo and then returns that data back to the expenses app. This makes it easier to kind of build richer functionality without having to build everything yourself, or offer something which your app uniquely does to other applications to integrate with. Next up is logic or services. Now, this lets your application execute some kind of functionality in the background without having to present something to the user. So this could be pretty much anything. This could be processing some information, uploading some content to the web, responding to an event happening on the device. As an example, my podcast application doesn't necessarily have to have anything on screen, but it can be downloading content and streaming it and playing the audio to me uh, all in the background. Next up is data or content providers. So Android has a standardized way that applications can expose and read data from applications. 
This lets you share your information or read information from other places to build a richer experience. This is Songkek, a band tracking app which I really like. Now, on first install, it'll actually scan my device looking for these content providers it knows about to find out bands or artists already on my device, music on my device, and it uses that information to bootstrap your profile. So here you can see it's found 200 artists on my phone already and offers me to kind of create a profile based on that information. This is a way smoother UX than having to have me enter it all manually. And it's made possible by this content provider system. And the last component is events or broadcast receivers. Now, the OS will broadcast interesting events which your app can respond to, or likewise, your application can broadcast interesting events to other applications for, and have them respond to it. In this example, when I start playing a song in my music app, the Genius application notices that because it's been broadcast across the system and offers up lyrics to the song, um, which is pretty handy. So those are some of the features you can use to build these open app experiences. Let's have a look at how the OS lets you build an open experience as well. Here are some of the major ways that um, applications can plug into the OS to expose their content in an open way. Firstly, Android lets you replace applications that your phone comes with. Here, I've replaced the default browser my phone came with with a third-party one called Linkbubble. This offers a different experience. When I click on a link, it opens up in this little tiny bubble, uh, which lets me continue browsing the content behind it until I can see it's loaded, and I tap on it, and then can view it full screen. It's a different experience, and I love that I have the ability to change that. Here, I've gone as far as replacing the launcher, or the home screen experience, on my phone, which gives you a completely different feel. So in this launcher here, called Peak, um, I can very quickly use the keyboard to find and launch applications or content that I use frequently. Next, Android lets you launch applications when you click on URLs. So in this example here, um, when I click on a YouTube link, it opens up in the native YouTube Android app rather than in the web page, giving you that full native experience so I can minimize and choose the next video to play, for example. Android also lets you see what other applications are installed on the device. In this example here, a newsreader app notices that I have the Pocket app, which is a Read It Later um, application, installed, and offers a quick link to save one of the news stories into Pocket for later reading. And lastly, Android just offers so many what I've deemed system integrations. This is places you can plug your app into the platform and expose your content or offer different entry points into your application. Just taking a look at the home screen, there are so many different places that your app can surface its content or plug in. You can create a live wallpaper. You can integrate with voice search. You can have a widget or an application shortcut. You can plug into Google Now. There are just so many different places that your app can plug in. You don't have to think of your app as this silo that you have to launch by tapping on it. Your app can actually bring content and surface content in so many different ways. And these ways are just evolving all the time. If we look at some of the more recent features in Android 7.0, you can now plug into the quick settings bar. So your application is always just a swipe away. Or you can create one of these floating applications, like the browser example we saw, so your application can sit on top of other content. Or you can do something like responding to the text uh, that the user has selected in any application. And those are just examples we've looked at on phones. Android obviously runs way beyond that, from watches to tablets to cars to smart speakers. There are so many different ways that your application can plug in and create uniquely open experiences. To make this all a bit more concrete, I want to give you a final example of an experience which I really, really enjoy on Android. This is my home screen. I've got kids, so I like to use pictures of my kids as my wallpaper. But not every photo makes a really good wallpaper. Sometimes they can be too light and they don't contrast very well with all the other stuff, the icons and the text that sits on top of them. So I run an application called Musai, which helps me to build a better experience. Now, Musai will automatically darken or even slightly blur the wallpaper image in order to give you sufficient contrast. And I can quickly double tap on an empty area on my wallpaper and then see the full um, brightness image there. Now, Musai has a few more tricks up its sleeve. For example, it offers a plugin API so that you can install new applications to offer different art sources, different wallpapers that you can show on your device. So here, for example, I have an astronomy pick of the day from NASA. Now, I've got two kids and I can't play favorite, so Musai actually helps me out again by actually rotating the wallpaper image from a folder of different images. 
And if you look closely here, you can see that Musai is actually working closely with my launcher. Here I'm using a cool launcher called Action Launcher, which will work with Musai to understand the image and theme itself based on it. So here you can see it's pulled out the colors from the wallpaper and used it to theme the search bar at the top and other areas of the UI. Pretty cool. Musai will also work with my smartwatch so that when the wallpaper changes, the same image will be sent to my watch so I can see it there. And even beyond that, it's also pulling out the colors from the wallpaper image into the watch face itself to customize to go with that image. So thinking about it from an app point of view, there's obviously the Musai app, which is at the center of all this. But it can actually talk to any number of other applications which have integrated this API, this plugin API, to provide different art sources. And then it also talks to another app, which is my launcher app, in order for it to theme itself. And then it talks to a version of itself running on the watch, which also talks to the watch face in order for it to theme itself. So there are actually a lot of individual apps, but they're all working together and communicating in order to create a single experience. And as a user, that's what I care about. Android offers these unique facilities for you to build open, collaborative experiences that you just can't do elsewhere. And I think that makes it pretty cool. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.